Hey guys, it's John here and welcome to part two of my DVD and Blu-ray collection videos. Now what I didn't mention before is uh, since I have way more DVDs, I'm going to cover them first and then do Blu-rays. So um, continuing with the DVDs, this first one, there's something about Mary, you know, being, yeah, contains outrageous never before seen footage plus karaoke. Uh, music video, you have a commentary by the Fairley Brothers, but yeah, this film, I remember trying, you know, I tried watching it uh, not too long ago, and I don't know, for some reason, it it's harder for me to get into this film. To me, the Fairley Brothers have done better, like, I definitely prefer Dumb and Dumber, Kingpin more, even me, myself, and Irene, I prefer more than this film, but I do have this film you know, for the collection, so, yeah, there's something about Mary, Cameron Diaz isn't bad, it's just, I think the Fairley Brothers have done better, but that's just me, but I do have that, uh, next, we have this, uh, two film collection pack of Dumb and Dumber, and Dumb and Dumber, the prequel, When Harry Met Lloyd, uh, the first one's definitely a classic, and I like the prequel. And it's funny because I was just talking about this in the live stream, you know, the prequel. And, it, you know, how crazy it is that the prequel is better than the actual sequel that stars Jim Carrey, Jeff Daniels. <laughs> this movie I can have dumb fun with. It's a mindless, dumb movie, but at least these two had chemistry. And that's more than what Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels had in the sequel. <laughs> but... I mean, Dumb and Dumber is definitely the better film, and definitely the classic, and this is the theatrical version, you know, it's not like, it seems, you know, it's getting hard to find, like, when you come across Dumb and Dumber, like, the movie, the DVD, it's the extended version, which has, like, what, 10 extra minutes, and it doesn't really add anything to the film, you know, I much prefer this, you know, this version, but... Fun double pack. So I got that. Uh, next, definitely a family classic. The Goonies. What more can you say about The Goonies? It has a good commentary up there with a cast, music video. I think at some point they should do like an updated, which I know they did like a special edition with a board game, but. I don't know, so maybe some updated features for the 35th anniversary, maybe. But The Goonies, definitely a classic. Uh, next, we have George of the Jungle, starring Brendan Fraser. Definitely a fun movie, a childhood favorite. Um, Brendan Fraser's having fun. Uh, I definitely enjoy the humor, um, which you have these sort of three mercenaries in the film, which, you know, those three guys, if you know what I'm talking about, if you've seen the film, those guys deserve their own movie um, because they were funny. But overall, a fun movie. You know, it's enjoyable. So, yeah, George of the Jungle, fun, fun movie. Let's see, next... Newer film, which I haven't seen, but I picked it up for cheap. The Hitman's Bodyguard, Samuel Jackson, Ryan Reynolds, you also have Gary Oldman. But yeah, I still haven't seen this one, so you can let me know about this one. But I got it for cheap. It's like a maybe a dollar, but yeah, The Hitman's Bodyguard, do have that. Uh, next, we have... Lost and Found, starring David Spade. This one I haven't seen. But, you know, for the David Spade collection, I do have it. So, yeah. Lost and Found. Got that. Uh, next, uh, for the Sandra Bullock collection, we have Our Band is Crisis. And I would say, you know, well, I haven't seen the film, for starters, but 
as far as you know, Sandra Bullock films, I have most of them. Uh, maybe one or two I don't have, but and you'll see more of them later. But I do have a lot of her films because she's my favorite actress. I mean, plus she's hot. So, but you know, got this for cheap. Someday I'll give it a watch. But our band is Crisis. I do have that. Yeah, it came out 2015, so still a newer film. Let's see next, which this is one Arnold film I haven't seen, and I actually uh, mentioned this in a recent live stream. But yeah, Raw Deal. I haven't seen this one. This is one Arnold film which I haven't seen. <laughs> Believe it or not, directed by John Irvin, he also stars Darren McGavin, Ed Lauder. His trigger has all the answers. I think this was actually filmed here in our state, North Carolina, if I'm not mistaken, but Raw Deal with Arnold, again, haven't seen. So let me know about that one. Uh, next, which I have to watch, Runaway with Tom Selleck. And I found this at a pawn shop. I know this year, I, I forgot when, but yeah, I definitely have to give this a watch. Kirstie Alley, Gene Simmons, who I think is the villain in the film. But Runaway, I'm a big Tom Selleck fan. I love Magnum P.I., Three Minute Baby. So, yeah, I do have this one, Runaway. Let me, let me know about that. Uh, next, we have Simone, starring Al Pacino. And this one I've always been curious about, but I've never seen Simone. So, you can let me know about that one. I've, it looks interesting. Al Pacino is perfect. The summer's most delirious, delirious comedy. You also have Jay Moore in the film. But yeah, Simone. So I got that. Uh, next, which I actually saw this for the first time this year and it's such a great movie just a great fantasy adventure and that's Willow yeah I saw this for the first time and it's just a, a great movie a magical journey um, you know a great again fantasy adventure with a good cast you know as I'm making of up here some behind the scenes stuff directed by Ron Howard but yeah, Willow, great movie. Uh, this next one is also a great movie that I'm glad I ha I own and I actually rewatched uh, this film again not too long ago, and that's Black Rain, starring Michael Douglas. One of my favorite Michael Douglas films. One of my favorite Ridley Scott films. Michael Douglas, kicking ass. Yakuza ass, Black Rain is great. You know, it's a great film. It's, I think it's at what in Japan. Yeah, in Japan, Michael Douglas in Japan kicking. You know the mafia ass, but Black Rain is a great movie. No one talks about when it comes to Ridley Scott. Definitely one of his most underrated films. Black Rain is great. see next it's a little dusty but you know what it deserves to be dusted well it deserves <sighs> yeah I'll talk about this I do have it in case if there's ever a rant predators yeah I do have it for the collection and, and again in case if there's ever a rant on the film if I ever talk about the predator films I do have predators and yeah it's just a rehash of the first with a crappy cast starring, you know, starring Adrian Brody, who I can't buy as a lead. You know, Danny Glover can wipe his ass with Adrian Brody. It's 
someday I'll talk more about that. But I do have Predators, so yeah. Got that. Uh, next, we have Clueless. And this is the Whatever Edition. Uh, the Class of 95, look at the cast. Then and now, Creative Writing, Writer Director. Talks about creating the world of Clueless, Fashion 101, Suck and Blow, a tutorial, some featurettes. But yeah, Clueless. So I got that. Definitely a 90s classic. Let's see next, which I haven't seen, but I do have The Man in the Iron Mask. Which stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Jeremy Irons, John Makovich. So you can let me know about let me know about this one. The Man in the Iron Mask. So I got that. Next, definitely a great comedy. The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. You imagine if this film came out today. People would have an uproar. People would go on Twitter and start a band, start a petition, start a an outcry because this film would offend them. I mean, just imagine if this film came out today. People would be in such an uproar. To me, this film is still funny. It's not politically correct. I love Andrew Dice Clay. I love his stand-up. Ford Fairlane is a great comedy that, in this day and age, it's refreshing. And it's this would be, in today's age, like a slap in the face to <laughs> the easily offended. It would be a kick in the nuts and the ass. <laughs> Ford Fairlane rocks. Great comedy. Uh, next... I've never seen this one. Joe vs. the Volcano, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. Yeah, I've never seen this film. I mean, you also have Robert Stack, Abe Vigoda, or Abe Vigoda, my bad. You got behind the scenes documentary. So, yeah. For the Tom Hanks collection, I got Joe vs. the Volcano. Love me know about that one. Uh, let's see, next we have Creep Show. Definitely a fun movie. George Romero, you know, that sort of uh, segment movie, like Cat's Eye. Uh, Creep Show is definitely a great movie. It's been a while since I've seen it, so I need to refresh on it, but I remember really enjoying Creep Show. Definitely a classic. Not much for features, but I know there's a TV series out there, but I don't have a lot of interest in watching it. But Creep Show, what more can you say? Let's see, next we have. Piranha, the 2010 remake. I can watch this for the gore and the nudity, but not much else. I mean, Elizabeth Shue, she's all right. I mean, I like Elizabeth Shue, but I wish there was more of her character, more of Ving Rhames, maybe, you know, maybe Christopher Lloyd, but it's just the rest of the cast doesn't work for me. I give it the gore and the nudity, but that's kind of it. But Piranha, I do have, so. I don't have the sequel. I'm not picking that up. Um, this next one is a double pack. Got the Conan films. Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer. Uh, which... Between the two, I prefer The Destroyer. You know, I like that it's more of an ensemble journey. Um, <clears throat> but these two, I mean, the first one's still great. These two are fun. You know, fun Arnold films, so a good double pack. 
Got that. Special features. I mean, you got the making of, a feature commentary with director and Arnold Schwarzenegger, deleted scenes. So, yeah. Got the Conan films. Let's see, next. Which I've heard of this film's reputation, but I've never seen... I haven't seen the film, but we have The Island of Dr. Moreau, and this is the unrated director's cut. Never before seen footage, or unrated, yeah, unrated director's cut of the film, interviews with the cast, which I've heard some stories about this film where, like, Val Kilmer was being a dick and, you know, burning some of the cast members with cigarettes or something like that, but, yeah... <laughs> Someday I'll give it a watch. So, Die Alone and Dr. Moreau, I do have that. Let's see, next, we have an Eddie Murphy film, Showtime, with Eddie Murphy and Robert De, Robert De Niro, which I have to still watch this one. I haven't seen Showtime. You also have Rene Russo, William Shatner, Some good features up there. So yeah, at some point I'll definitely give this a watch. Showtime with Eddie Murphy, Robert De Niro. Got that. Let's see next. Definitely a classic. Splash with Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah. You have a making of up here uh, with the cast. Audio commentary with the director, producer. So, some good features. And that's the 20th anniversary yeah, edition of Splash. Good Ron Howard film. Good Tom Hanks movie. Let's see, next, we have one of my favorite comedies The Big Lebowski. I mean, what more can you say about this film? I mean, again, just a classic. One of my favorite comedies. If I had a top 10 of favorite comedies, this is definitely in there. Some good features. The Dude's Life. The Dude Abides. Uh, 10 years later, I guess they interviewed the cast. The Lebowski Fest. I mean, the, the Lebowski Fest. Uh, the Dream Sequences of the Dude. Interactive Map. Yeah. The Big Lebowski. Great comedy. Let's see, next. Pacific Heights, Michael Keaton. Definitely a great thriller. Michael Keaton is the highlight of the film. But also, you know, Matthew, Matthew Modine's good. You know, Mel, Melanie Griffith. You know, she's good support. Mako. I remember he was one of the tenants in the film. And yeah, just a good thriller. You know, Michael Keaton's creepy at times. Definitely a good movie. Creepy. Let's see, next. We have Galaxy Quest. Definitely a great sci-fi comedy. And I know they, I think they made like a documentary or something recently on this. I like to watch that um, because Galaxy Quest is a fun, you know, just a fun movie. It's features, I mean, there's not a lot, but yeah, I think I know this director is directing Bill and Ted 3, so we'll see what happens with that. But Galaxy Quest is a great, you know, again, sci fi comedy, so yeah, enjoy Galaxy Quest. Let's see. Next, definitely a classic, The Breakfast Club. And you got some good features. I mean, you got Accepting the Facts, a trivia track, a 12 part documentary, The Origins of the Brat Pack, a feature commentary with Anthony Michael Hall and Judd Nelson. And this is the 30th anniversary edition of The Breakfast Club. 
What more can you say about that? Great movie. Let's see, next we have Private Parts with Howard Stern. Definitely a fun movie. Sort of, you know, telling the origins of Howard Stern and how he came to be. And, you know, it's, a, again, a fun movie. Definitely raunchy, as you would imagine. But, yeah, Private Parts, it's funny. WNBC. <laughs> but what do you call Paul Giamatti in that? What, Pigman? Or something like that. But, yeah, funny movie. Uh, next, we have... The Island, Michael Bay's The Island, with Edwin McGregor, and this is one I haven't seen, believe it or not. You also have Scarlett Johansson in the film, Sean Bean, Steve Buscemi. But yeah, The Island, have to give that a watch. Uh, next... This is a great horror film, definitely, definitely underrated. You know, rewatching this again recently for October, I love this film. Stephen King's Graveyard Shift, to me, is great. Um, I love this sort of greedy. You know, it takes place in this sort of mill. I love the underground feel to the film. I like the creature. I like the cast. Yeah, Graveyard Shift is. Definitely enjoyable. It's it's entertaining. You know, to me, it's it's underrated. Stephen mocked that character. Gotta get you on Star Search. <laughs> yeah, definitely a great movie. Next, we have the Thin Red Line, which I haven't seen, but. Quite a cast. You got Sean Penn, Adrian Brody, you got George Clooney, you got Jim Caviezel, John Cusack, Woody Harrelson, Nick Nolte, Elias Cotis, John C. Riley. Seven Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture. The Thin Red Line. Uh, yeah, still haven't seen. I'll definitely give that a watch at some point. Let's see, next, we have this uh, Dolph Lundgren collection of some of his films, and, well, I'll show you, and this pack includes the following, uh, Command Performance, Bridge of Dragons, uh, Direct Contact, Direct Action, The Peacekeeper, Blackjack, and Sweepers, so... You got seven of Dolph Lundgren's films. You know, trying to get more of his stuff for the collection, and I have some more, which you'll see later. But again, Command Performance, Bridge of Dragons, Direct Contact, Direct Action, The Peacekeeper, Blackjack, which I know is, I guess, the pilot they made for USA, which never picked up, and Sweepers. Not bad. I think it was like five bucks. So I got that. see next we have <clears throat> excuse me the collector which I think this is the second one or the first one I can't remember which but because I know there's one out there called the collection and I know they're working on one right now so but yeah but I still haven't seen this one I'll definitely have to give that a watch so got the collector Let's see, bring some over here. Uh, next, we have Dante's Peak with Pierce Brosnan, led to Hamilton. Yeah, this is a good flick. I mean, I prefer Volcano a little bit more, but this is still a good film. You know, sort of around that time they were making disaster films. Directed by Roger Donaldson. Yeah. You know, this is still a fun movie. As a making of, a feature commentary by director. So, a couple of good features. 
Dante's Peak. Uh, next, we have Three Men and a Baby. Definitely a classic. I don't have the sequel, but this is still a great movie. You know, great 80s comedy. Tom Selleck, Steve Guttenberg, Ted Danson. Yeah, Three Men and a Baby, definitely a great movie. Uh, this next one, The Fisher King with Robin Williams and Jeff Bridges, another great movie. Directed by Terry Gilliam. This is one that I would like to go back and rewatch. I remember really liking this film and Robin Williams' performance and Jeff Bridges. I thought they had a great chemistry. Yeah, The Fisher King is well-made film. So I got that. Uh, next, we have Cellier. Cellier? <laughs> if I can ever say it right. Cellier? Cellier? But Kim Basinger, Chris Evans, Jason Statham, William H. Macy. Directed by David R. Ellis, who I think has passed away. I've heard some good things about this movie. Haven't seen. But again, Cellier. So I do have that one. Easy for me to say. <laughs> um, this next one we have Slam Dunk Ernest. And I have a few of the Ernest films, uh, but this is one I haven't seen. You also have Kareem, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He's in the film. So, yeah, Slam Dunk Ernest. So I do have that. Let's see. Get these few ready. Next, we have War Dogs, which is still in the plastic. I think I picked this up on Black Friday last year, but you have Jonah Hill, Miles Teller, directed by Todd Phillips. You have Bradley Cooper in the film. But yeah, War Dogs, let me know about that one. Do you have that? But I don't know why it says, it says my frames are being dropped or whatever that means on my camera. But anyways, I have that. I'm going to keep going though. Let's see, next we have Predator 2. Definitely a great sequel. Underrated. I don't get the hate. Um, Predator 2 kicks ass. It's two disc. Special edition. This son of a... Alright, there you go. Maybe that'll help. But I'm continuing on. Something is going on with the webcam, but I'm going to continue. It has disc one. You have a couple of commentaries. One with the director. Uh, one with the writers. Disc two. You got a lot of featurettes. I mean, just look at that. <laughs> a lot of featurettes on the second disc. Three behind-the-scenes featurettes. A full-length mock news reports from the movie. So, yeah, this is loaded with, with bonus materials. And Predator 2 is awesome. And I have the first one and this one in a double pack on Blu-ray, so you'll see that again at some point. But Predator 2 kicks ass. Uh, see, next we have The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original great movie and this is the two disc ultimate edition made of steel like that and it wants to come out every time I open it and a lot of features disc one you got a couple of commentaries disc two you got a documentary Two documentaries, deleted scenes, outtakes, blooper reel. Yeah, Toby Hooper film. 
Definitely classic. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The first one, so I got that. Let's see, next we have John Carpenter's Vampires. Definitely a good, entertaining John Carpenter film. James Woods is the lead. No one really talks about this film, but yeah, Vampires is entertaining. I thought John Carpenter did a good job in this film, so yeah, Vampires, I do have that. Let's see, next we have The Art of War, starring Wesley Snipes. This one I haven't seen, but for the Wesley Snipes collection, I think they made like two or three of these, but I do have the first one, The Art of War. Let me know about that one. Moving on, starting on the second pile. If I ever do a rant, uh, I do have the film and it was cheap, but we have the Point Break remake. Yeah, I, I found it for like a buck. So again, whenever there's a rant, um, or whenever I do talk about this film, still haven't seen it, but I will let you know my thoughts. But I do have the Point Break remake. So, got that. Uh, next, we have House of Wax, the remake, which is a fun remake. I like this movie. Jerry Padalecki, you know, I thought he was good in the film. Some good gore, some good features. So, yeah, House of Wax, a good horror remake. Let's see, next we have Cujo. And I rewatched this again on TV, and it's just a classic. Cujo, what more can you say about this film? Features, you have a commentary with director Louis Teague, the making of a three-part documentary with all new interviews featuring the cast. So, yeah. Stephen King's Cujo. Good creature flick. Classic. So I got that. Uh, next... We have Crazy Heart, starring Jeff Bridges, which is sort of a, you know, drama, which I haven't seen, but I have an idea. I mean, it's a drama. Jeff Bridges is like a country singer, but yeah, I still haven't seen this film, but I'll definitely give it a watch at some point. But that's Crazy Heart for the Jeff Bridges collection. Uh, next... We have Bowfinger, starring Eddie Murphy, Steve Martin. Definitely, you know, as far as comedies, uh, one of Eddie Murphy's last good films. I mean, Bowfinger is a lot of fun. Him and Steve Martin, you know, have good chemistry. You have a commentary by director Frank Oz. Um, some deleted scenes, but... Yeah, Bowfinger is a lot of fun. Good 90s comedy, so I got that. Uh, next, we have Monster's Ball, which is a very good film. Billy Bob Thornton, Halle Berry, Heath Ledger. Some good performances, and Halle Berry's hot in this movie. She's very sexy. Um, Halle Berry is great. Um, and a very good film. Very good drama. Monster's Ball. So I got that. And I was looking at the features. You have two commentary tracks. One commentary with Halle Berry and Billy Bob Thornton. Some deleted scenes. So, got that. Uh, next... We have definitely a classic, My Bloody Valentine. Pick it out the case. As far as features, you have My Bloody Valentine and the Rise of the Slasher film. 
an interactive horror film history, deleted footage. Yeah, My Bloody Valentine's definitely a great slasher. Definitely one of my favorite slashers. Great movie. Let's see, next. We have No Escape with a Ray Liotta. And this is definitely a fun sci-fi action movie. Good cast. You also have Ray Liotta, Ernie Hudson, uh, Kevin Dillon, and Stuart Wilson is the you know he's definitely a good villain in this film. That he's also he was also the villain in Lethal Weapon three. He was a villain in Ninja Turtles three as Walker, and he's definitely having a fun here. He's definitely you know. Um, psychotic but directed by Martin Campbell who directed GoldenEye and The Mask of Zorro No Escape again you know a good sci-fi action movie underrated I would say yeah No Escape is good Ray Liotta I thought was good as the lead uh, next The Monster Squad and this is the 20th, 20th anniversary edition two disc. So with the features, you got audio commentary with writer and director Fred Decker and the cast. A five part retrospective. A conversation with Frankenstein, a never before seen classic interview with the monster himself. Some good features. Yeah, The Monster Squad is definitely a family classic. Great movie. Wolfman's got Nars. <laughs> uh, next, we have Misery. What more can you say about this film? Another Stephen King classic. Some good features. You got a commentary by Rob, you know, Rob Reiner. Actually, you got two commentaries. A featurette. Advice for the stalked featurette. <laughs> Celebrity stalkers featurette. But yeah. Misery. What more can you say about this film? Great movie. Let's see. Next. It's a Wonderful Life. Definitely a classic. Uh, for the holidays. And it's a two disc. Uh, collector's set which includes a new color version as well as the beautifully restored black and white version also has a make it of yeah it's a wonderful life what more can you say about this film uh, next we have Hardcore Henry definitely a fun movie um, I, I really enjoy the point of view, the POV angle. Um, there should have. I'd like to. I like to see more films like this, more action films where it's all POV. But yeah, Hardcore Henry is definitely entertaining, and uh, I'm glad to own this on DVD. So I do have Hardcore Henry. Uh, next, we have. To Kill a Mockingbird, which is a, I think in the 50s, yes, well, 60s movie. Haven't seen it. But, yeah, it stars Gregory Peck. And you got a making of up here. But, yeah. To Kill a Mockingbird. Got that. This next one. We have Spawn, which this one I'm back and forth with. It's, I would say it's an okay movie. Um, I like Michael J. White. I like John Leguizamo, but Martin Sheen, I think he's hamming it up at times. Uh, the CGI is horrendous. Um, it's just, it's not great by any means. I can watch it, but it's not great. Um... This is one that I can, I know there's talks of trying to reboot the film, 
And at one point, Jamie Foxx was going to play Spawn, but I don't think that's going to happen. I would be open for it. I would be open to it. But Spawn, I mean, it's... I can watch it, but it has problems. Let's see. Next, we have 8 Seconds, starring Luke Perry. Rest in peace, Luke Perry. Directed by John Appleson, who also directed Rocky and The Karate Kid. I've, I think I saw this like a long time ago. Haven't seen it since. But yeah. Eight seconds. So I do have that. Next, we have The Planet of the Apes, the first movie, definitely a classic. And I don't have the uh, the other films, but I would like to get my hands on that collection pack. I've seen it around, but maybe I have to go online and look for it. But yeah, the original Planet of the Apes, definitely a great movie, classic. So I got that. Let's see, next we have The Dark Crystal. Which I know they made like a Netflix sequel or something recently where they, you know, brought back the puppetry and such. And so, but I haven't seen The Dark Crystal. So I definitely will give this a watch at some point. So you can let me know about that one. The Dark Crystal. Uh, next, we have Valkyrie with Tom Cruise, which I haven't seen, but got it for the Tom Cruise collection. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, let me know about this one. So, I got Valkyrie. Uh, this next one, Good Horror Remake. I think it's a remake. 13 Ghosts. Yeah, this is a fun one. It's been a while since I've watched it, but I remember liking uh, 13 Ghosts. It's a it's a fun movie. You know, fun horror film. So I got that. Let's see. Moving on. I think we're good on time. Try to keep these at an hour each. Uh, but next, we have Event Horizon. Definitely a great horror film. And some good features. You have a commentary by director and producer, the making of, five documentaries. So, yeah, Paul Anderson did a great job directing, good cast. Event Horizon's a great movie. Isn't there talks of like doing a sequel or like a director video sequel or a reboot or something? I thought I heard. You don't need that. Come on. But anyways, next we have Lost Boys The Tribe, which is a sequel to The Lost Boys, which I haven't seen, and from the stuff I've heard about it, you know, I did like uh, the third film, you know, Lost Boys The Thirst. I did like that one. Um, that was a good sequel, but from the clips I've seen of this film, it just doesn't look that good, But but I do have it. I don't have the thirst, so at some point I'll get that. But I do have the Lost Boys on Blu-ray, so you'll see that later. But yeah, I got that tribe. Let's see, next we have Amityville Horror Two: The Possession. I think I have the first one. I think. I don't know how many of these they made. Like what? Nine, ten, you know, nine, ten of them, eleven. I don't know how many, how manyville horror films they made, but I do have the second one. So yeah, I got that. Haven't seen it. Uh, next, Ali with Will Smith. You know, good biopic drama. Also directed by Michael Mann, who directed Collateral and Heat. I thought Will Smith 
did a good job playing Muhammad Ali. Go to cast. Yeah, this is a good one. Ali. I enjoy it. Uh, next, we have American Graffiti, which I haven't seen, believe it or not, but another one that I have to watch. You have a making of up here, featuring interviews with the director and producer, Francis Ford Coppola, including the cast. Never before seen screen tests with the cast. But yeah. American Graffiti. So I got that. Next, we have Clear and Present Danger with Harrison Ford, which I haven't seen. I haven't seen Patriot Games. I've seen little parts of, of that one. And I know this is kind of like a sequel. I think it's the same character, Jack Ryan, but it's a Jack Ryan movie. But I do have Clear and Present Danger. So, got that. Uh, next, we have this uh, Clint Eastwood triple pack of Gran Torino, uh, Million Dollar Baby, and Trouble with the Curve. So again, Gran Torino, Million Dollar Baby, and Trouble with the Curve. I got it for like a dollar. So from the Clint Eastwood collection, got this triple pack. Each has its own disc, which is nice. So I got that. Uh, next, we have The Last Dragon, which I haven't seen, believe it or not, uh, but I've heard so much about. Yeah, let me know about this one. The Last Dragon, so I do have that. Getting close to the end. Uh, next, we have Peppermint with uh, Jennifer Gardner, which I know is a newer film. Came out, I think, last year. And I found it for a dollar. Um, haven't seen it yet, but I was curious about it, so we'll see what happens. From the director of Taken. But yeah, Peppermint. So I do have that. Uh, next, we have Safe with Jason Statham. Haven't seen, but, you know, for the Jason Statham collection, I do have this. Let me know about Safe. Uh, next, we have Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom, which is the sequel to the 2015 film. Which I, I got Jurassic World, and I'm not the biggest fan of that. Um, maybe I'll check this out at some point. I know they're working on a third one, and they're bringing back the original cast, like Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum, but I just don't have a lot of interest. Um, but maybe sometime I'll give this a watch. Maybe. But I do have that one. Damn, it's getting stu stick, but... Uh, moving on, we have Kiss the Girls with Ashley Judd and Morgan Freeman. I haven't seen this one. I think it's with the Alex Cross character. I think it's... It's with the Alex Cross character. I do like Along Came a Spider. I like that one, but I haven't seen Kiss the Girls, so I don't know how good or whatever... It is, but yeah, I do have that one, so let me know about that one. Getting hiccups. Uh, next, we have Layer Cake. We have Daniel Craig, Comini. Good cast. Directed by Matthew Vaughn. I haven't seen Layer Cake. So you can let me know about that one. So I got Layer Cake. Uh, 
Uh, next, we have My Giant with Billy Crystal. And I've never seen this film. I mean, I've heard about it. Um, so you can let me know about this film, My Giant, for the Billy Crystal Collection. I got that. Uh, next, we have Needful Things. The stars Ed Harris. You also have Bonnie Bedelia, J.T. Walsh. It looked interesting. I picked it up, you know, I think this year for like cheap. It may have been like two or three bucks, but yeah, Needful Things. Let me know about that one. Uh, next, we have The Rich Man's Wife, starring Halle Berry. You know, I'm a fan of Halle Berry. I think she's a good actress. Yeah, don't. I don't think I've seen this one. So, also let me know about that one The Rich Man's Wife with Halle Berry. Uh, this next one. Signs and Mike Shyamalan. This is a decent movie with Mel Gibson, Joaquin Phoenix. Um, to me, the last decent M. Night Shyamalan film. You know, I like it. I like Signs. I, I know, you know, it gets picked on a lot, but I like Signs. So I got that. And these last few for this part, part two. We got Hulk, Ang Lee's Hulk. I can watch this film, you know, I, it's not perfect, but I do like Eric Bana. Um, I like Nick Nolte in the film. I like Sam Elliott. Now, I think it's a decent, you know, comic book film. Again, I, it's not great. It's not perfect, but I can still watch it and I still like it, so... Yeah, I got Hulk from 2003. Uh, next, we have Jack Reacher, starring Tom Cruise, which I haven't seen, but for the Tom Cruise collection. I want to say I have the second one, but I don't know. I can't remember, but I do have Jack Reacher. So I got that. see next Her Alibi a Tom Selleck movie you also have William Daniels in the film but yeah Her Alibi haven't seen but again I'm a Tom Selleck fan so for the Tom Selleck collection I have to give that a watch at some point Uh, next, we have Bullet with Steve McQueen. I don't have a lot of Steve McQueen films, but this one I do have, so, you know, for Steve McQueen, never seen, but one day I'll give it a watch. But I do have Bullet. Uh, next, for the Whoopi Goldberg Collection, Burglar, which I haven't seen. You have also about you know Bobcat Goldwaith. And I like Whoopi Goldberg. I'm trying to get more of her films for the collection. But yeah. Burglar, I do have that. This next one. Charlie's Angels from 2000. Which is a fun movie. Yeah, I like this movie. I mean, you have a good cast. Cameron Diaz, Lucy Liu, Drew Barrymore, which to me is better than this new one. I have zero interest in a new Charlie's Angels. I'm like, what is Patrick Stewart doing in there? This one, I mean, I think what it is, the film knows what it is. 
and it's having fun. And Bill Murray, he's fun in the movie. Some good villains. I mean, you got Christopher Glover, Tim Curry, Sam Rockwell. So, you know, Charlie's Angels, I like. So, it's a fun movie. So, I got that. I was looking at the features. You do have a commentary up here with the cinematographer. Some extended scenes. Outtakes. So, yeah, I got that. And this last one for part two of my DVD and Blu-ray collection, we have Coal Miner's Daughter with uh, CeCe Spacek. I know, yeah, the true story. I think it's Loretta, yeah, Loretta Lynn, the singer. Which I've never seen, so, yeah. Coal Miner's Daughter has a couple of features on here, like an interview with Tom Lee Jones, exclusive interview with Loretta, uh, Loretta uh, can't, can't talk today, Loretta Lynn, so, yeah, Coal Miner's Daughter, got that, and that's it for part two, and stay tuned for part three, I hope you enjoyed part two, so part three will be next. Uh, thank you for watching and have a good day.